It seems incredibly likely that TikTok, or rather its parent company ByteDance, is going to be launching a brand new music streaming service called TikTok Music. And ByteDance already owns a company called Reso, which is essentially exactly that, but it's only available in very select markets. And TikTok Music is going to be coming and available to much more of the global population. And we're going to be going over this in a sec, but if I go over here, one thing that's kind of in intense about TikTok is one, just the social media platform already kind of controls a lot of the music industry, which just how it blows artists up from time to time, at least obviously not everyone blows up on TikTok. Um, but they launched a music distribution platform this year in March called SoundOn. And this made them not only a giant participator in the music industry for just how their social media platform works, but also a music distributor. And the interesting thing about their distribution platform SoundOn is that they also have some limited a function as a record label slash almost management, but really more like a record label. They have an A and R process. They have they provide some support for artists that you know, once they reach certain criteria. So they're they're a dis distribution platform, but a distribution platform in the way that some distributors also kind of function a little bit like record labels and to pr provide support for their artists and take a commission. So that's what they've already had: TikTok, SoundOn, and Reso. But there's been some new things that have been happening. This article is from October 13th, but we're going to look at another one that's more recent. Um, a couple months before this, they were making a bunch of Twitter accounts in different markets. So they made TikTok music like America, TikTok music Australia, etc. They made like six different Twitter accounts or so. And so that was kind of a hint. They also filed some patents for TikTok music related things, and they were hiring people for a music streaming platform. So. That was all severely hinting towards this direction, but now ByteDance, the TikTok's parent company, is in talk with labels to launch the music streaming platform in 12 plus new markets. So the reason why they're in talks with the record companies is because they're trying to figure out what is a fair deal and payment structure to offer them. So this is exactly what would have happened with Spotify back when Spotify was getting off the ground. And it's interesting because the way TikTok's licensing works is they don't pay per stream to the, the rights owner of the song. They pay per video the song is used in, which, or in a lot of cases, they pay like a yearly fee to off, like offer unlimited music from certain record labels. So they pay artists almost nothing as a result. Um, and so obviously the record labels don't want that either, just like us independent artists. And so, you know, Facebook or Meta um, did arrange a thing with TikTok this year um, to offer more fair payment structures. So hopefully, one, the TikTok app will update itself to have a more fair payment structure, but two, hopefully the actual streaming platform of TikTok music will have a more fair streaming structure. And I have a feeling it's going to be similar to Spotify, which I would definitely not call a fair payment structure, but it's definitely like drastically better than what TikTok pays artists now, the social media app TikTok. Now, apparently TikTok music, just like Reso, is going to have an ad supported free tier and a paid subscription tier. And that's concerning because like, like Spotify has that too, right? And that's a downside because the free users pay a lot less than the premium users. But with Spotify, the freemium people are 43%. So like roughly half free users, half paid users. With Reso, it's single digit percentages. And it's probably gonna be very similar to TikTok music. It might be a little better because they're launching in the US. Reso is not available in the US. They're available in countries that don't have as much discretionary income for the most part. Um, and so it might be different with TikTok music, but at first it's probably gonna be pretty brutal where most people are on the free tier. Now on top of this, there was this new thing that came out a couple days ago, Reso Code hints at TikTok music, global rollout preparation. And if we go through this, I'm not gonna read every single word of this, but the code, which TechCrunch found, read, your profile and activity on TikTok and TikTok music will be synced and used to personalize your experience on both TikTok and TikTok music. You can manage this by going to settings. So that means there's gonna be some type of link between TikTok and TikTok music. Um, they're probably gonna be separate apps, but they're gonna have some overlap, which is kind of interesting. So it could be the case where if you follow an artist on TikTok music, you might be more likely to be recommended stuff on TikTok. Or if you follow them on TikTok, you might be more likely to be recommended their stuff in TikTok music. And what could be really cool with this is if there's ability for artists to have a, you know, artist.tiktok.com, just like how we have Spotify for artists, and then you can link your social media profile to TikTok music on TikTok, and then now you can have your catalog available right in your profile in some cool way. And maybe you can, every time you do a video with your music, you can tag your song, and that might make it more likely for people to go over to TikTok music and check it out, especially if there's a free tier. Obviously, that doesn't pay as well as a paid tier, but um, those type of features are really promising and could be a really cool thing.
So I'm going to link to these articles if you want to read them in full in, in the description of this video. But there's a lot of kind of good and bad stuff about this. Like TikTok music could provide some really cool integration between social media and a music streaming service. But obviously there's concerns with how horribly TikTok has paid the music industry. And I think I have a video that I'll link here about it. But there's also some other downsides um, and things that we should be worried about as, as independent music artists. And one is being that TikTok is, you know, they're a Chinese company and there's obviously a lot of implications with that with, with how the Chinese government meddles in companies that are, that are from there. And I don't want to get into the whole politics thing, that's not the point of this video, but the point is that in the United States that's been a big concern for the past couple of years because they track so much data. Essentially they track all most of the same data that companies like Facebook and Twitter track, but now it's being sent overseas and in the United States it's been a big problem. So. Years ago, there were some talks about blocking the platform in the United States, and that has actually come back up with a lot more people behind it. So that is one huge glaring thing that, that could happen, and it might not, but that's something to consider before you double down and hedge all your bets on TikTok, which might just get wiped out overnight because of something you can't control. Now, outside of that, there are some big concerns with one platform having such gigantic control. So right now, they have this huge pull in the music industry because they have all the people, right? They have billions of monthly users. They're a music-centric social media platform that regularly blows up artists. And a lot of labels and A&R folk and stuff, they actually vet artists from TikTok. They see when things are trending and they try to jump in them early and then sign them so that they can kind of profit early on the success of these rising artists. So they've kind of already embedded themselves in that. They launch a distribution service, they're functioning as a label, they launch a music streaming service. Sp Spotify built up a massive empire that really has a stronghold in the music industry, and TikTok is positioning itself to be even more of a gigantic force in the music industry. Way bigger than, than, than Spotify, just because they have so their hands in so many other little pots that Spotify never even had their hands in. Now there is another huge concern that's independent of those things, and that is that TikTok has a very bad monetization structure for its creators. So this is independent of the music, but the, the creators on TikTok are what keep people there. And if there's not much of a monetary incentive for creators to be there, what's keeping them from going to Reels and YouTube Shorts? And one big scary thing that TikTok should be worrying about, and which I'm probably they are, <laughs> is that YouTube Shorts is adding a YouTube partner program like integration in February 2023. So this means that uh, you know, TikTok has a creator fund and Instagram has a creator fund. Um, from my, from what I've heard through the grapevine, and like I get paid on Instagram for making reels, and it's it's decent. And TikTok gives me nothing. And also, TikTok creator fund isn't available to most countries. Like there's a lot of Canadian creators with millions of followers that get paid nothing because they can't get paid because it's just not part of TikTok's thing. But they can make money on reels. They can make money on YouTube. But when YouTube Shorts add the YouTube Partner Program like integration, there's going to be a gigantic monetary incentive for all those creators on TikTok to funnel as many people as possible away from TikTok, onto Reels, and specifically onto YouTube. And this has happened in the past. In general, over the history of time, creators that blew up on social media apps, the first thing they did once they realized what was going on is they should try to become a YouTube channel and make that their main platform. Just because the monetization structure has always been the kind of cornerstone of, of what keeps YouTube the platform for creators. So let me know in the comments what you think about all these things. There's a lot of cool things and also a lot of scary things that could happen. If you want to learn more about how to market your music online, you can check out this playlist right here. And if you want to check out my course on how to promote your music on Spotify using Facebook ads, you can check this thing out right here. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.